Continuamos con la cobertura de agentes de 305 Camino a la Dubai World Cup. Y ahorita estamos nada más y nada menos conectados desde Miami hasta Dubai con Laura King de Dubai Racing Channel TV. Laura, thank you very much for having us. Thank you for opening your uh, house to actually have a, a quick chat with you about everything that is uh, hitting up for the 25th anniversary of the Dubai World Cup. Ah, you're very welcome. I don't think I've ever been introduced in Spanish before, so that's the first. Do you speak English? Is Spanish? No. I can say la cuenta por favor. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, that's, that's something. It. That's something. If yeah. you need to solve something, definitely you can ask for the check. Yeah, exactly. That's all I can do, I'm afraid. So, yeah, don't speak to me in Spanish. I won't have a clue. It's okay, don't worry at all. It, it is a pleasure for us to actually do that uh, introduction in Spanish. And it is actually also a pleasure to have you here in the show. And thank you for, for this time. I know you have been like nonstop working. Uh, I, I read it actually in your Twitter that, you, that the Red Bull has run out in, in Dubai. Well, I'm very lucky. A friend of mine, um, Michael Adolson, who's working with us on Dubai Racing Channel a little bit this year, He's actually just bought me eight cans of Red Bull. So I'll be okay for a couple of days. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like a couple of days, eight, eight cans, it can work. But, you know, we are still like 10 days away. So we need a, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, I get through a lot Dubai World Cup week because we, we start uh, our first broadcast of the day is at seven. And our second mm -hmm. broadcast of the day is at six. So... We're starting work around five and we're finishing around seven, eight o'clock. So it's a long, long day, but I love it. It's my favorite week of the year. Have you ever uh, been involved with horse racing before? Or this is uh, like your first time, uh, like 100% uh, with this? So I've been with Dubai Racing Channel 11 years. Um, previously, I worked on a, a two racing magazines here in Dubai. So my whole career really has been, been media side of horse racing. What it means for you, horse racing? Oh, difficult question. Um, I love it. I love the, I love the horses. Firstly, I think you have to really to be in, in racing. Um, uh, I love the international aspect of it. It's one of my favorite things about the Dubai World Cup. Horses coming from America, especially, but we'll also have horses from from France, from England, from Bahrain, hopefully from America, of course which is one of my, my favorite things about it. So um, I think that's what it means for me increasingly is seeing different horses from different areas of the world, how they can compete on one track on one night, who can prepare them the best, who can overcome the disadvantages of travel or things like that. That, that fascinates me most about the sport. Of all the different, uh, you said that you were 11 years in the, in the uh, Dubai Racing Channel. Uh, So far, which is the most impressive win that you have witnessed uh, for the Dubai World Cup? Oh, it has to be Aragat. That was amazing. Uh, you know, he, he missed the break. And on that day, it wasn't too easy to close. And we, I think Bob Baffert as well, all of us thought, that's it. And to do what he did was, was absolutely amazing. He's not my favorite winner of it. That would probably be California Chrome in the time that I've, I've been here, that the World Cups I've covered, which I think is, I think, 15 World Cups now. Um, California Chrome would be my favorite just because the first year he was here, he was beaten. I, I felt, you know, I thought it was a real shame. I thought he was the best horse in the race. And then to come back the year later and win it, I thought was fantastic. But if you asked impressive, impressive has to be arrogant. Definitely, definitely. And, and actually, we, we have the pleasure to interview Bob Buffer here in the show during the previous, uh, the Breers Cup last year. And he mentioned that it was actually his top three of all the different horses that he had, that, that it's one of the favorite races, the one that he actually won with Arrogate in the World, World Cup. Yeah, I think because obviously Bob had the history here with having the heart attack and things like that. He's close with, with Sheikh Mohammed. I think that that made it more special for him. And, and Arrogate at that point just looked unbeatable, didn't he? You know, I was there over in, in Florida for the Pegasus when he beat California Chrome. That was another very, very special race. And yeah, I, th I don't think any of us that were there that night will, will forget that. It was an amazing performance. I agree totally. We are uh, kind of moving uh, along or moving away from the COVID uh, and all this madness. 
that actually started last year. How everything has been doing so far in the carnival in Dubai? Well, as I'm sure you know, due to you know worldwide circumstances, we had a reduced carnival. We usually have 10 weeks. We just had seven weeks. Do you know why it was good? So seven nights of racing, um, including the afternoon fixture, which is Super Saturday, which was last week. It meant that all the group races were kind of packed together, which I thought was great. I loved it. We were down on numbers for international horses, which is partly to do with the prize money being reduced a little. So it's disappointing, but I thought we still had a really good carnival. The two English horses kind of lit the, lit the stage up, really. We had Lord Glitters picked up a couple of wins, including the, the Group 1 Jabba Hatta. We had Equilateral win two sprints for trainer Charlie Hill. So that was the highlight of the carnival for me. Probably being British, I'm being a little bit biased. That was, it was great to see. And it was also really nice to see a, a victory for Uruguay. And he's actually Brazilian, but um, trainer Antonio Sintra has been a big supporter of Dubai going back years. He had a winner before. He came with El Patriota, won the, won the Al Bastakir trial and, and finished a, a good third on, on Super Saturday in the Al Bastakir itself. He now has invitations for two of his horses to run on the Dubai World Cup fixture. And I'm delighted for him and his team. I think they've shown a lot of faith bringing their best horses from Uruguay here to Dubai. And I'm so happy they'll be able to compete on the big night. I agree. So uh, there's a lot of uh, contenders that are already there uh, every morning uh, doing the workouts and keeping up the heat towards the, the, the March 27. Uh, how, how, how everything has been so far in, in terms of uh, how, how you think about the, the horses, uh, the Japan, uh, the Japanese also, they have a huge number of horses for the different races for that day. Uh, so how, what's your experience and what you can share with us? The Japanese, I think, will be very strong, particularly in the sprint in the Dubai Golden Shaheen. They have three horses who competed in, in Saudi. Um, they have Kapano Kicking, who actually won that Saudi sprint. They have Matera Sky, who was just beaten on the line and they have Justin, and the interesting thing, speaking to connections, they they seem to feel that Justin might actually be the best of them. He missed the break in Saudi. They think this is a horse who's really improving. So he could be interesting. I'll be partly rooting for Matera Sky. He's been so unlucky in these big grade ones. He really deserves one. He goes out in, in the front and he just gets, gets collared on the lead. If it's a speed favoring track and he draws low, he's going to be going to be quite hard to peg back. So that's always a fascinating race. And, and of course, we have a, a very nice contender coming from Steve Asmussen's yard in, in your pond. I think he's, I'm probably saying it wrong, but uh, looking forward to seeing him. He's a very, very good horse. So I'd say the Japanese, their strongest chance is probably in the sprint, but then they also have Pink Kamehaha, who won the, the, the Saudi Derby. The form for that already looks very strong. So... He's going to be hard to beat as well. And we often underestimate the Japanese. I don't think we should do that this year. Correct. So and uh, for the, the uh, Dubai World Cup contenders, uh, there's this very well, I would say, engaged, I would say, lovely horse. That the one that I actually had the, the pleasure to meet, the Sleepy Ice Todd, and the trainer Miguel Silva. What, what's your uh, card? What, what, what do you think about this this? Horse with that actually love been taking pictures and videos and everything. Oh, he's such a cool horse. He comes on the track, he stands, he does what California Chrome used to actually when he was here before the, the World Cup. He, he'd come out, he'd stand, he'd almost look around for the cameras. He's a real character, and it's been great to meet Miguel and, and uh, hear from him about the horse's chances. I think they're a little bit disappointed about Saudi. They felt that the horse just got a bit of a, a rough run through the race. So they're hoping for better here. and. The track at Maidan this year has been playing extremely fair. It's really been really, really great. Like much credit to the, the track team for, for getting such a, a fair track. So hopefully they're going to go fast. He's going to come late. He's a, a threat, I think. I'm not sure I have him winning the race, but I think he can maybe maybe pick them up a very nice check and finish in the top three. That's great. Uh, this morning, I was visiting one of the contenders. Uh, obviously, I would say one of the top contenders, which is Jesus Team, uh, who's going to be shipping next week for uh, trainer uh, Jose Francisco D'Angelo. And he's going to have a, uh, a great rider, one of the top right now winning uh, gray stakes, as it is uh, Joel Rosario. Uh, they are ready to actually put their names in the top 
like and become the first Latin uh, trainer and uh, the second Latin uh, jockey to actually win the, the Dubai World Cup. Oh, I'm so excited to see this horse. I love what they've done, which is properly target this race. Because I think we didn't see it today. We had a horse win called Mashako who ran in, in Saudi. But my concern is that horses coming from the Saudi Cup had a tough race on a, a track that was had been rained on. It was a little bit damp. It's hard for them. Jesus' team, Jesus' team, I don't know how, how we're going to say it on the day, what connections prefer, but he's coming in here fresh. They've targeted it from what I understand from what you're saying. Everything's gone perfectly for them. He's got a good team. They've done their research. They've spoken to the right people. This horse has got a shot. I really like him. Whether he can beat Mystic Guide, I don't know, but um, I, I think they've done everything right with his preparation. They, they meet already before last year, uh, Mystic Guy and, and this team. And uh, what I have been told by the trainer is that actually he was not quite in the, in the best form but at that race. And they were, the, Mystic Guy beat uh, this team, but they were like very close. So I think this time it could be the opposite. Yeah, and Mystic Guy is a very, very nice horse for Godolphin. And he's been placed in grade ones. He was impressive last time in the Razorback. But he's no... Curlin, he's no California Chrome, he's no Cigar, he's no Arrogate, he's not coming in here with a bunch of grade one wins. So it's it's an open race this year. Yeah, actually, actually, it seems to be a very, very uh, equal in, in terms of potential for many of the uh, horses that are going to run. Yeah, it, it is. And we have a, a local contender here, Military Law. He's been campaigning beautifully this year. He won first up, he was sixth in Saudi. He'd be our best local horse, but the Americans should be too strong for him. But he also brings a different dimension. He's another closing horse. Um, it's it's right the way through. You look at the the field. I don't think it'll be a huge field for the Dubai World Cup. I think we're looking at sort of eight or nine runners. I don't think there's a really a standout short, a standout horse in, in the race, which I think is is kind of good. We all like to see the superstar, but of course, most of those retired last year. So it's 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 that sort of year where it could just go to a one of the outsiders. That's perfect. And uh, what's your think about uh, Miss Riff, like the, the Saudi Cup winner of uh, this year edition, uh, missing the Dubai World Cup and jumping to the, to the Classic? I was a little surprised, actually. Um, I think they're going to the toughest race on the night. We have Chrono Genesis in there, the filly from Japan. She's very, very good. She's going to be hard to beat. Um, Mishraf obviously ran such a fine race. It's set up nicely for him in Saudi. He's a very, very good horse. He has to prove he stays a mile and a half. They probably won't go that fast. But so they're, they're asking a lot of him here, I, I think. And yeah, John Gosden's a genius. He's a master trainer. But I was surprised that they picked what looks the toughest race on, on the night. Yeah, uh, there, there's so some uh, handicappers that they actually said that the, the idea of uh, Josh Gosden is actually after that classic, it's going toward the, the Judgment uh, Classic in uh, England. Mm, yeah, so I think obviously for Stallion value, they're going to want to try and win greater ones over different distances. So it looks as though, as you say, that they can go potentially from here to Royal Ascot. It will be quick enough in June. They have the option for the Eclipse in, in July. Then the Jub Month, as you say, in August. And then I think their big target is to try and win the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe, which is in October. So they have a lovely campaign through the year with, with Mishriff. And he's already an absolute star. Not too many horses can com compete at the top level on, on dirt and turf. So it's great to have him at the meeting. We needed a big name. And I think, I think he's a pretty big name these days. Definitely. So uh, the next couple of weeks, you're going to receive a lot of visitors in, in Dubai. Not necessarily from the for the attendance to to like the general public, but yes, you're go, you're gonna receive people from US, from Latin America that are part of all the the, the different interests and horses and connections that were invited to the to the big night. What's your recommendation for us? What's your recommendation for us to get in get into Dubai? What we should do? What we should actually enjoy of of being there in in, in Maidan Racecourse and of course in Dubai. Oh, we're very lucky here. We've um, obviously, like everyone else, we haven't been unaffected by, by the pandemic, but we have socially distanced uh, restaurants open and, you know, you're limited to a small group and you have to obviously keep your mask on. We're very strict with, with face masks here. 
Um, but, you know, much, there's plenty of dining options. There's not much entertainment right now, obviously. Um, for people arriving early, we have a little bit of domestic racing going on, which would be a great thing to, to get to try and see if you can uh, get a get a badge too. We have uh, Jebel Ali races next week on, on the 19th. And it's just a great city. And you're coming at the best time of year to, to go and check out the beaches. It's a very outdoorsy city in, in, in the winter. You've got people out running, kite surfing. There's there's loads to do. We have some of the best restaurants in the world and say we're very much safety conscious, of course. We're trying to keep everybody safe and keep everybody distant, but things are open for business here in, in Dubai by and large. Well, that's perfect. And I, we, we all look forward to actually enjoy uh, uh, the big week of, of the year, which is going to be the week of the Dubai World Cup. And we thank you very much here at Agente 305 and myself to, to give us the, the chance to talk with you and, and go a little bit further about everything that is going on in the Dubai World, in the Dubai Carnival, which leads us to the Dubai World Cup. Oh, you're more than welcome. It's been great speaking to you. And I look forward to welcoming everybody to Dubai over the next couple of weeks. Perfect. Uh, wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great to speak to you.